The parents of Leah Sharibu, who turns 17 in 10 days, have said the federal government has been deceiving Nigerians and the international community with promises of rescuing their daughter from captivity. Now, according to the spokesperson for the family and president, leadership, empowerment, advocacy, and humanitarian foundation, Dr. Gloria Samdi Poldo, President Muhammad Buhari should rise up to his responsibility of rescuing Leah like he did when he ensured the freedom of all other Muslim girls abducted with Leah just a month after the abduction. Joining us to discuss this is Yemi Adamulekun, Executive Director of Enough is Enough Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We also have uh, joining us via Skype, Asiwaju Abayomi Oke, a social commentator. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. Thank you too for having me. Let's start this conversation with you, Yemi. Do you share the opinion that the Nigerian government is deceiving us and the international community with her avowed promises to rescue Leah that's gone unfulfilled for over two years now? Well, I think Leah's case is similar to the Chiba girl. Um, Chiba girl was abducted in 2014. Six years this year, April 14th, we did that. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I mean, the 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 statement that you made about Ms. Koju saying that the president ensured that other Muslim girls were released were not Leah. I disagree with her because I don't believe it was a... It was a negotiation based on religion. Leah chose not to um, renounce her faith, and she was kept behind. But I don't think that has anything to do with President Muhammad Wai. But in general, I think the federal government has been irresponsible in terms of protecting Nigerian citizens in general. So Chiba girls, Leah Sharibu, other men and women, boys and girls who have been abducted, I don't believe that they are doing enough. And if we see the challenges that they're having with the military and dealing with Boko Haram, it's not unexpected. So what are your thoughts as she spends another year in captivity? Excuse me? I said, what are your thoughts as she spends another year in captivity? The same. I mean, as with anything, every Nigerian citizen is entitled per the constitution to their security by the federal government. And... The issue with Leah is not peculiar to Leah, and I think that's the point I'm trying to make, um, as, which is why I went through Chiba girls, six years, other men, women, boys, and girls. Leah's case is particular because we know the story and the circumstances of why she has not come back. But quite frankly, underlying that or beyond that is the fact that she's still a captive of terrorists as other, other Nigerian citizens. So if the same effort um, to release her or the Chibok girls is applied to other family members. And, and we speak about Leah and speak about the Chibok girls because we know their names. We know Leah Sharibu, we know her father, we know her mom. The Chibok girls, we know their community, we know the parents. But there are a lot of other Nigerians who are missing that we don't know. Um, one of the things the Bring Back Our Girls movement has championed for six years is a missing persons register. So we can actually even know which Nigerians are missing. So right. Their parents and loved ones can advocate for them. All right. Let, let's Unfortunately, bring Leah is spending her second, second birthday in captivity. Okay, fi finish up. Finish up. I was going to... Hold on. I just, that's what I was just going to say. That I mean, Leah is... is and unfortunately, even as a society, we tend to remember these things um, and when they're milestones, quote-unquote. So this, we're having this conversation because it's Leah's birthday. We talked about it in February because that was when she was abducted. Maybe in December, we'll talk about the fact that she's spending another Christmas in captivity if she hasn't been rescued. So also because of the new cycle, it, come, it pops up on people's consciousness at milestones. All right, let's, let's bring Abayomi uh, into the conversation. Uh, on May 14, I mean, she turned 17 years. Do you still hold um, hope um, of her rescue? Oh, okay, um, one, let me first um, commend the, the media for bringing this to, uh, you know, to the mainstream again, at least for us to be able to you know, talk about it. Uh, I must commend the media for that, for that because 
at this point in time, uh, it appears as if every other thing that's on the lips of, uh, of um, people for now is um, coronavirus and the likes. But um, we can't, of course, shy away from the fact that um, we, we have some of our beloved ones who are in captivity uh, against their will and their wish, as the case is. And um, that of Leah Sharibu is peculiar. Um, why is it peculiar? It's because um, she refused to renounce her faith, and that was why she's still being held um, with other um, girls in, uh, in uh, Boko Haram, you know, captive as we speak. But, you know, uh, me. Okay, I, I think we're having a little issue with the if network where our bio is. That, um, I will come back to you about me in a bit, but let me just ask you this question. Yeah, right. the, the, the last we heard on this was that negotiations are ongoing uh, to secure her release. What worries you the most about the seeming lack of update from the government, unless prodded by groups like the BBOG and others? And I think if we parallel it to our current crisis with COVID-19, um, when the midst of the global pandemic, Lagos was shut down for five weeks, and not once in that five-week period did any of the three senators or any of the House of Rep members, um, well, let me take that back, except for Mr. Femi Bajabia Miller, who is the speaker of the House of Reps and who's speaking sort of at a national level. Um, speak, to, speak to citizens and encourage their constituents on precautions to take to stay safe. We're seen at the forefront of um, distributing food and necessities. So I think it's a just general lack of um, regard that our elected officials have for citizens. It's the same reason why we don't have um, updates around those who have been abducted. There are fears that she would have been indoctrinated by now, especially with rumors of her having had a baby in captivity. Do you think that even now, the government is already too late to rescue her? It's never too late. Um, the decision is up to her. She's still a minor. She's 17. Um, so the government owes the responsibility. Even as an adult, the government owes the responsibility to rescue any citizen that's been abducted against their will. And if the government then rescues you, and you now decide of your own free will you want to go back, nobody can stop you. But it's never too late to rescue anybody taken against your will. All right. Um, I'm told we have very short time, so I'll just go ahead and ask you about the uh, response. There are some people that are saying that uh, the government's inaction, as it looks um, to many, is sending a wrong message that some are more equal than others. What's your response to that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think um, we'll be deceiving ourselves to not believe that Nigeria doesn't work. It's not a class. It's not class based, so to speak. Um, and, yes, yeah, so I have no objection to anybody feeling that. Because as we kept saying, even when we bring back our girls, if it were kids from rich households in a very affluential school where they were abducted and not children of the poor, the response will have been different from the Jonathan administration to the Buhari administration. Um, and especially, I would say, the Jonathan administration, really, because they had the opportunity, because it was done under that administration, to immediately rescue the girls. So they were in denial for many days and then tried to basically ship it off. And if um, Nigerian citizens hadn't kept talking about it, we would have forgotten about it by now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Yemi, for sharing your time with us on the program. Thank you. And uh, we also thank Abayomi. Unfortunately, Network could not let us uh, continue or even have him speak um, as extensively as um, he should have. Still, we say thank you very much uh, for the time that you did manage to uh, share on the program. We will take a short break uh, for plus reports. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Don't go away. Nigeria began easing restrictions on Monday in its capital, Abuja, and in Lagos, its largest city, marking the reopening of Africa's biggest economy after more than four weeks of lockdown. Nigeria has recorded over 2,500 confirmed cases of the coronavirus and its seven deaths since recording its first case at the end of February 2020. The government has said that the stay-at-home order in place since March 30th in Abuja, Lagos, and Ogun 
will be lifted gradually over a six-week period. The regions will now align with the rest of the country where the restrictions in force were less strict and include an overnight curfew, mandatory fake masks in public, and a ban on non-essential interstate travel. Nigerians gave their opinions on the easing of the lockdown and its guidelines. They also gave opinions on the lockdown and how it had affected them. It's not really a good thing carrying two passengers because we are not going to make up to the money we are making before. So it's not, it's, it's not impressive at all. There, there is no increase in salary and there are increase in prices. In fact, companies are not paying full salaries, so this has an um, adverse effect on my budget as a person. not happy. We are not happy. I don't have money in my pocket. I have family. I have family. I'm a father of three. There's nothing at home right now. I was coming to work, telling my wife to pray for me to work and bring something so that we we'll eat. But as you can see, there's no hope of working today. In late January, when the news broke that Leah Sharibu had been allegedly impregnated by one of her captors, there was the expected furore, an outpouring of outrage at the continued travels of the young Christian girl who became a woman far before she should, losing out on most of the joys of her teenage years. Even then, I said, the government of President Muhammad Buhari had failed her. I still hold same view today. It is inexcusable that the girl remains in captivity in spite of the continued public outcry. Even then, I want to hold on to the faintest of hope that in spite of her gigantic failings, uh, the government I mean, they will prove naysayers wrong, that they are not deceiving Nigerians and the international community, which promises that efforts remain to rescue Leah Sharibu. Otherwise, they would be given impetus to accusations that they are deliberately worsening the fault lines of religion and by extension our political future. That said, May I add a note of caution, as last time, to those who are idolizing Leah and making her only a mere symbol of religious grandstanding. Please be reminded that she is just a girl, a young Nigerian child, whom we all have failed. And that is my take. Thank you for watching today's conversation. You can watch our previous episodes on Plus TV Africa YouTube channel, as well as share your thoughts um, in the comment section. We're back again tomorrow. Until then, as always, please be well, stay safe. This too shall pass.